it's time for Geocache Talk. Whether you are at work, in the car, or wherever you are, we hope you enjoy this show about the great sport of geocaching. If you are watching live on YouTube, you can be part of the adventure tonight in the chat room and participate with others as they watch the show. If you are listening later, please give it a like and subscribe on your favorite podcasting app so that you can get all of the weekly Geocache Talk goodness. All right. Big thanks to the Trail Bugs for the music on the audio side and our featured patrons, Demon Hunter 2, Electric Water Boy, and Electric Water Boy has found his 12,000th cache. I think that's right. He's in the chat room tonight, too. He is in the chat room. Yeah, we're going to get some good stuff from him. He's, he's at Legal Draft. If anybody remembers uh, Geo Woodstock uh, last year, um, they uh, wow. we were there. Just now we're there at Legal mm-hmm. Draft. And uh, they do. They have a great root beer. So I'm pretty excited about that tonight. So to hear about Very, that. very good root beer. Yes, great. Like, I didn't think as an adult I even cared about root beer anymore, but I, now I do. So yeah. <laughs> it was that good. <laughs> that was a fun event. We, we gave away shirts. Uh, and if you ever give away free shirts, it's a little bit like a madhouse. <laughs> yeah. It was just the shirts were flying everywhere. It's like, hey, free shirt. You know, yeah, I wish we'd have saved more of those too, because those are great shirts. They are cool. Yeah. I, I I got one, fortunately. You uh, uh, you definitely cannot miss them if they show up anywhere in an event. They're very bright green. Yeah, they're bright green. So everybody you got could, one. You could double as a safety cone and be okay. Yeah, yeah, they did. They went fast. So if you got one, you know. And he says he got ten growlers of root beer. Oh wow! A growler of the uh, yeah, their imperial stout's incredible too. So. Yeah, Scott was right. Gave them out about five minutes. That's right. It was like that. Uh, We can't talk too much about going to breweries and all that stuff because I'm still locked down. So I know that's sad. We we don't have that option here in my where I am right now. So I'm kind of (laughs) jealous. All right, Uh, Electric Water Boy, Aggie Jedi Master, and Teus Joshua, the geocaching vlogger, Nick at Cashley, One Kind Word, Butterfly Girl, Loon Trackers. The Aussie Geocacher and our new patrons, Jay Schulz, Little Miss Sunshine, Just Finding Our Way, Whiskey, DJW House, AWOL, Sackishness, The Fours Awakens, Huey 250, Merlin 1392, Random Explorer, and Kenny Mason Matey. I think that's a combination of names, is what I'm thinking that one is. Kenny Mason Matey. Or Maddie, probably Kenny Mason Maddie. Sorry about that. You know me and you know me in names, Jesse. That's right. <laughs> if you'd like to become a patron and have me butcher your GC name, click on the become a patron link on the front page of the Geocache Talk website, or head on over to patreon.com forward slash geocache talk for more details. Patrons get the now famous blackout coin. Oh, look, Dan's ready. I went with the old school one tonight because uh, Oh, ooh. I thought it'd be more fun. Dan was ready. I love it. The man was ready. On it. <laughs> he was on it. Uh, other geocaching items during the year, as well as bonus content. And let me tell you, that's with a capital B yeah. bonus content. Uh, we have been doing a separate podcast mm-hmm. just for the patrons. Once a week, we do a separate podcast. So, uh, it's a lot of time, but it's a patron podcast, but I'm thinking about renaming it to the ambush Gary podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's that works I'm for me. Doing that, so. that, that works for me. There's, there's the Aussie. Thank uh, you, sir. He just finished up doing a game show. He did. I hope yeah. that I was able to get on for a minute. It was pretty cool. It was a Kahoot. I think it, was, I, it looked like a hoot. I'm assuming he was using. I only got to get on for the last yeah, part. Hoot. Yeah, Good hoot. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah, Scott was right. Dan has his organized workshop. Of course, he's ready. You're right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, um, kind of organized, <laughs> semi organized, right? We'll get into yeah. yeah. Uh, invites to special events only for patrons. Support level start at as little as bison tube level which is $3 a month. Let me welcome my co-host, Jesse. 
Good evening. Glad to be here. Although the time change is messing me up. It's like wide daylight here right now. Yeah. And that's messing me up. And I'm, I'm used to like saying good evening. It's dark outside and I have to turn the lights on and stuff. And right now it's daylight. So this time of the year always messes me up. Oh, Janice says it was it was fun. Well, good. Good. Way to go. Way to go, Craig. Yeah, it was a good one. He had it run well. So Exactly. Way to go. Organized chaos. That's funny, Darwell. Yep. <laughs> That's and that's what life is right now, right? Organized yeah, that chaos. Is organized chaos, yeah. Uh, all right. Sponsor tonight is uh, I, I'm ambushing Jesse. I don't know if he's ready to grab. Uh, I'm never ready. Are you ready? Ride in the rain. Oh, I don't even know who that is. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I don't uh, know if I have it see. either. Oh, I almost put up the wrong one, though. I had the. Uh, that we're always got. Yeah, there you go. I will put up the promo code, which is no longer available, but I have a whole stack of stuff from it, though. Yeah. Although, stay tuned. We might have another code. We might have some more stuff to give. You know, That'd more. That'd be awesome. Hoping for that. Right in the rain is an all weather writing paper, perfect for all your physical caches, large or small. Any pencil or most pens work fine. For the best experience, try one of their all weather pressurized pens. Right in the Rain is available in a variety of styles, including notebooks and printer paper. Check them out at writeintherain.com. And that's R-I-T-E in the rain.com. You know, I've started actually as part of, well, as part of the new log that I got from the blog. Yep. I'm doing all my cash as part of the template. So I'm using that that template, you know, now to do the conditions and yes. the geocache and everything else. One of the things I'm adding in there is I'm making sure when I actually come across a log, you know, one of these caches that have Right in the Rain, I'm yeah. like, Thank you. Yeah. I hate mushy logs. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice about it, right? Because I don't want to like downplay any of the other cash, but I'm like, thank you for the dry log. This is exactly what I want to see. Right in the rain is awesome. Thank you. Thank you, owner, for that. Because you don't, you know, you don't see them every single time, but when you do, you're like, oh, this is good. As soon as yep. you see it, you're like, I'm good. Yep. So that's kind of nice. Hashtag no more soggy logs. Is that a thing? Or are we just making that up? No, I think that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that was making it up. Go ahead and throw it out there. It is now. Yeah, yeah it is now. Yeah, I thought that. Yeah, I thought that was the Ryan Rain folks gave that to us. The marketing guy. Hashtag no more soggy logs. Oh well. I don't know if we're going to start that yet or not. So. Oh, we're not starting it yet. Oh well. Don't. You know hashtag. It's okay. Gary's not good with human secrets, so it's okay. <laughs> so there we go. All right, let's jump right into show one ninety eight, as we're going to talk about geo geo ugh, geocaching workshop with the truck Daniel Truck and Miller's with us tonight. I did get a haircut. That's right. So, Daniel, welcome to the show. I don't. Yeah. Enjoy it. <laughs> he got his cut too. <laughs> glad you're glad That's you're on board. Right. Thanks for being on tonight. Oh, thanks for having me. Oh, you bet. All righty. Um, yeah, Kenny Mason Man is like same barber as Dan. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Um, a soggy log band. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, funny. that's true, but it's no more, no more soggy logs. That's right. All right. Oh, I wonder Dan's asking about one, one, nine, what is, what is in store for 200? Hmm. You know what? I can't answer that question. No, Jesse's been banned from the show 200 notes <laughs> and the show 200. There's a whole, I got a whole thing set up for that, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, it's going to be good. I, I, I've, we've spent a lot. We've spent, eh, we, we spent some good, por good portion of time on it. Mm -hmm. um, got some surprises. It's going to be a fun, fun evening. That's in two weeks. And so to finish out the talk on that next week, we're going to talk about adventure labs. So those are our upcoming shows. Uh, adventure labs, uh, making a good adventure lab, you know, all your thoughts on adventure labs, uh, you know, is, is important. So we're going to, we're going to do that. So looking forward to Jesse and I's discussion on adventure labs. So we because lost I'm time. getting a bunch next weekend. Although d d uh, Dan, you might want to, we, we keep, we keep Dan on his. Uh, well, we lost Dan. Yeah. We got his, we, got, here, but we lost him on his other one. We got the shop cam going. Did I tell you that I have a chance to get 15 sets of labs next weekend? Oh man, that's awesome. Yeah. So I, I don't know that I'll be able to get them all, but there's 15 sets of labs just driving between here and Vegas. 
Going oh, to visit the daughter for Memorial Day. Yeah. That is a ton. Here we go. He's back. Oh, he's back in. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it happens. You know, sometimes the connections get lost. Don't even worry about it. Just, just log back in. Yeah. Um, yep, we'll do that. I no think problem. somebody just published an Adventure Lab today. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Just yeah, Ryan did. Lab today. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know that he uh, a little de couple details about his, and they're very cool. I wish I was down there to get them. Uh, yeah, two hundred already. You're right. Um, Kathleen mentioned about uh, Crane Adventure Lab, so yeah, we're gonna have some tips. Uh, both mm -hmm. Jess and I have, have have published our one of ours, and then we're also working on or waiting on helping Ryan with the Adventure Labs for Mingo Madness. So and uh, can I mention? Oh, oh Ryan mentioned. Oh, we're going to have at least 10 Adventure Lab caches, and but we may even have more than that. That's all I'm going to say about Mingo Madness uh, Adventure Labs. So, all right. Yeah. Cool stuff. That's as far as we're going with that. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, all right. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to talk about and uh, kind of show and tell. Daniel's going to walk around and he, we're going to talk about uh, some of his uh, tools and why we think those are good tools for a geocaching workshop. So uh, we're going to try to make this transition. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, Dan, is we're going to go ahead, go ahead and mute um, yourself on the app and then switch that one. And then you'll need to unmute this one because I don't think I can unmute your... You'll have to unmute that one, Daniel. There we go. Can you hear me? Yep. I can yep. hear you now. Thanks, sir. Yep. So I guess wherever you want to start, you know. Um, there we go. I had I had you, my volume down, so. Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, so no we'll start wherever you'd like to start, and we'll kind of talk through it. All right. Well, I'd have to say the uh, most important tool you'll need is a, uh, is a drill. Yep. Yeah. You know, I have a Milwaukee drill. Harbor Freight makes great drills. You know, the more you use them, the more you want to spend on them. But uh, Harbor Freight. cordless drills certainly make life a lot easier. Uh, but as far as power tools, that's it. That's what you need to do to have a geocache is to have a power drill. And then any type of saw will work. Um, I have a circular saw that I use. Um, it's not a real high-end one, but it does the job. It cuts. Um, if I'm working with a lot of PVC, I actually use a hacksaw because it cuts smoothly. It's easy It's and it's cheap. You can buy a hacksaw for $10. Sure. Um, and then a power grinder is nice because it helps you to cut some things or sanding um, along with the sanders. You know, you don't have to have but it's nice when you're trying to finish something off. Um, mm -hmm. Belt sanders are good. I'd have to say the second most important tool after a, a drill would be a Dremel. Um, oh yeah. I use my Dremel a lot. You can do a lot of stuff with the Dremel tool. Yeah. And uh the more you do, the more you find out. I've got a nice little air stapler that's um was nice, it was a great find. Uh, hey, uh hey Daniel, what um Yes. I I've I've used different things. Um actually you can buy a PVC cutter. We use them for the kids used them for um yes. um for robotics because they were making uh, ro robots with uh, uh, in the robotics thing class for uh, uh, with a pipe. With, they have they have a PVC pipe cutter. But um, Teresa was asked about what you what you're using to cut PVC pipe. Is that your hacksaw that you were using? I I have a PVC pipe cut cutter. This is a little expensive. I actually yeah, I bought this one. because I was putting power lines in or yeah. uh, water lines in. So that was really nice. Yeah, um, so I used that, it for that. Yeah, open that thing up so people can kind of see them in the middle of that. Because um, if you open it up, you can kind of see how it's curved. Yeah, show it up to the camera there if you can. I'm going to set you down for a second. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, um, those are nice if you're built, if you're cutting a lot of of, uh, yeah. of PVC pipe and it's easy to use. There you go. So and this is nice. This has got just a little. Yeah, it's got the ratcheting part to it. Yeah, you don't it have. It doesn't to. take a lot of hand strength. Yeah, it really doesn't. It's, it uh, doesn't. No, you're right. 
That's uh, very similar to the one that we used to uh, set up a sign in Texas. Yeah, Jesse and I, we still have it. We'll, we're hoping to get a different one, but if we need it in a pinch, we've got it. But yeah, uh, PVC cutter, those are nice, the kind that ratchet, because again, you don't need, you would think that you need a lot of strength to cut a, uh, a piece of PVC pipe because you look at it and you're like, that's going to be rough. But those cutters do a great job. So, yeah. Um, I think what I use a lot of for PVC, as I'm showing here now, is a, it's a miter box, just a okay. plastic miter box and a miter saw. I think okay. I picked that up at Walmart a while ago. And uh, I use that pretty hard. It, one, it does a nice cut. And because you have the miter box, you can mm -hmm. hold it in there and you get a nice straight cut. Um, so that helps. But I cut a lot of PVC with a with a chop saw. Oh, okay, yeah. This is, yeah, I do have a table saw. It is not here at my shop right now. My son is using it to do some remodeling, so he has my table saw, which is a great tool when you're working with wood. Um, I do have a, a router, um, which is nice, and uh, it's yeah. one of my favorite tools. You can really do some work. Um, now, I had to uh, manipulate this, and I have it. You see that zip tied there? But for safety, I have a foot switch. So oh, okay. I step on the foot switch. Right. And I put my foot off and it shuts off. I, uh, most important is remember your safety. You, know, you want to make sure all your shutoffs work. Don't zip tie things shut and then try and work with them. Yeah. Um, and then I have a scroll saw, um, which is really nice. If you want to start doing some uh, nice, like, intricate uh, cuts, the scroll saw will do a great job. So Dan, uh, uh, question in the chat room about different saw blades. I think uh, th there is a well. Do you use the same? Do you do you use the same blade for PVC as you would wood? Or um, I use the same blade for PVC that I use for um, for wood. Only if I'm cutting Schedule Forty or heavier PVC. Okay. If I'm cutting light PVC, um, I'm looking at a a, a, a fine tooth blade you know something with a lot of teeth um it doesn't tend to uh chip as much where the other blade will on the thin pvc um like uh where do i have and i have a bucket of just pvc parts this is this is my grab bag the bucket of part yeah. and for those that don't know when when if you're hearing anybody talk about schedule basically that's the thickness of the pvc pipe so Kate's going to ask you if you go to the store and they ask you, you know, is it schedule 40 or schedule 20 or whatever? You're going to be like, I don't know. And it's written on the side of pretty much all PVC has it written on the side of it in case you need to. So this is schedule 40 right here. That's real thick. Yeah. That's a real heavy. Um, and then there's a lighter PVC. Yeah. You see how much yeah. That is. And, uh, I Either one works. They're really there's some price differences in them, but not a tremendous amount when you're dealing with it. Uh, I love my. Uh, I have a very small drill press, um, which is nice. And here, here's the thing: the biggest mistake you can make when buying power tools is going big. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Start small. Start with the tools you'll use. Um, like I said. I use I have a Milwaukee uh, drill only because I have a farm and I use my drills hard and I use them a lot. Right. Um, if you're a contractor, but when I just had when I lived in just a house, Black and Decker was just fine, did the work. You know, I still have a Black and Decker cordless drill. Yeah, I've I got I got, I got hooked on Dewalt so, and I assume that batteries in a dewalt wouldn't probably fit into milwaukee i'm sure they keep their own proprietary battery i'm guessing uh, somebody might know better um, than that. actually uh, i think it's i got batteries for my milwaukee it was a three it's called batteries 3x batteries. okay they're not good. kind of breaking up a little bit but yeah, yeah, Ryobi. Um, like three X batteries or battery batteries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Ryan's mentioned my Ryobi. I've I've used Ryobi in the past, but um, 
So, all right. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about, and I guess also show us um, some of the other things you would use. Sort of like like I don't you, you don't you don't have a uh, like you you were talking about the you have a uh, uh, you don't have a, a jigsaw. I do have a jigsaw um, okay. somewhere, but somewhere what works for it is is the the scroll saw will work like a jigsaw, which okay. is what I use more often. Gotcha. But a jigsaw is ha helpful, um, for, especially if you're cutting wood and you're trying to do angles or trying to do like a curve. Um, that's that works a lot better than it would uh, than a regular saw would. Okay. Uh, and then, but, you, uh, yeah. I was going to say also, can you uh, show everybody your uh, the how you got your drawers laid out on the as far as uh, your all your your sure. uh, your parts. You have you have some nice. Got to move a chair around here. Yeah, no problem. And see, typically I sit. I'm sitting there because of how my lights are. But typically yep. I'll sit over here, and I just got a nice set of drills uh, drawers here that make life just a little bit easier. Um, I have my padlock drawer of all the different types of padlocks <laughs> that I have. Everybody's got a um, series of padlocks. <laughs> And, you know, a lot of it's just you start with the stuff that you need. And this oh, is yeah. my uh, ready to hide bison tubes and uh, stuff. Everything's in there. That yep. Everything in this drawer has a logbook in it. It's just ready to go. Oh, smart. That's uh, and then here's my and this my supply drawer I have. This kind of gets a little bit messier because you kind of grab it. Like, but this is where my logs are and uh, my cash stickers. I put all my caches. Cool. Um, so... Nice. And this is where my stuff is that I have to make my uh, drop logs. I started making these. This is my first one that worked out, so I'm pretty pleased. I've, it turned out pretty nice, and hopefully it'll work and make do the things that I needed to do. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Uh, go back to there for a second. Um, so one of the things, I guess, this is a really good item to show people is that um, – Grab the the drop log again, if you would, sir. And uh, the the cool thing about these kind of, I guess, maybe show well, just a lot of people haven't built a cache with those in them. So, kind of walk through a little bit about what all your why it works and all that. All right, uh, it's really four pieces of equipment. Um, you need a nice little uh, drywall toggle. Um, you want to get the quarter inch. It's a nice size. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, you know, that just works like that. And you can see where that goes in there. Um, I got some uh, braces um, and that just, you know, they're just a nice heavy, you know, that's that piece right there, which works. And then there's some, uh, these are door latches, uh, child proofing. Yeah. Proofing, uh, for geocaches, um, the locks. And uh then I just cut my PVC. Now I did use uh, my Dremel to cut the hole there. And as you can see, it wasn't a super clean cut, <laughs> but nobody sees that. But nobody's me see and everybody who's <laughs> watching the show. Yeah. And then you just, um, like I drilled a hole there and I got to turn my angle back here. There we go. Yeah, you're good. And then I drilled in there and that's uh, and you just the sticker actually, you know, that, formed a nice connection. I'm going to be really interested to see how this does in the wild. Um, mm -hmm. This is the first one. Uh, WV Tim had one out on how to do this. Uh, DJ Hauser has one out on how to build it. And uh, so it's, and that's where I learn a lot of my stuff. I watch a ton of YouTube videos yeah. of what's of how to build and how to do stuff. Um, Gadget talk is one of my favorite ones. Plug. Well, appreciate so, that. <laughs> so um so let, let's do this dan if you would um if you'll uh go and take a moment switch back to your uh laptop we'll give you a minute to do that and then um uh if we can what we'll do is we'll walk through um some of your projects that you're working on so yeah ian like he looks away and all of a sudden we're talking about some crazy contraption yep <laughs> that's what happens you never know what's gonna happen so yeah so we're Especially gonna be, when I'm involved. yep 
So you're switching back. I'm going to mute your other one. We got it. You got it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, all right, cool. So let's drop that one for the moment. Very cool. Um, a lot of people are giving you a lot of um, a lot of accolades for your for your shop. Now, granted, Dan knew we were he was going to be on tonight. So, <laughs> but actually, no, his I did not clean very much. <laughs> I did clean up a little, but I didn't spend a whole lot of time. <laughs> That's funny, uh, but. Uh, he did a, you did a Periscope last week, I guess. And that's when we kind of started talking about this whole deal. Um, and the shop looked good then. So I'm not, you know, don't, not going to say anything, you know, you, your shop looked good back then as well. So, um, but yeah, you keep a nice organized workshop. <laughs> and that's tough. It's taken me years to get this organized. And this is, this is super organized. It used to be a whole lot worse. <laughs> uh, my wife helped me with a lot of the organizational tips when, when I, we used to share a space in the garage. Um, then uh, we built the shop off to the shop was actually inside of a uh, pole barn that I have on the farm. You know, right. and I realize a lot of people don't have access to that. So when you look around, you can see gaps in some of the walls. That's what happens when you let teenagers help you build walls. Um, <laughs> you get gaps. <laughs> and uh, my ceiling was all free. It's uh, it's pressed lumber. That was somebody. It was at a for a how mobile home place was. It was all their odd cuts, and they just put them out on a pile and come get them. So I went and got a pickup truck load of them, and that's how I put the the roof in here. It's not a up to spec or or really fancy, and I'm not even going to show you. <laughs> but uh, it was us. free. And yeah, yeah so. uh, Dar Darwolf will say, "And uh, is this a cabin in some secret location, or is it in your backyard?" <laughs> so he's not going to tell you. He's not um, it's <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm You'll kidding. have to just. Uh, it's not far from my house. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, Craig, I'm hoping, I'm hoping Chrissy doesn't see this. I just got yelled at today for having a bunch of extra containers in the garage that are like spilling over and everything's messy. And if she sees it, I'm gonna have to tell her we didn't do a show tonight because she's off doing something else. <laughs> but she can't see this and yell at me for your organization because mine is not up to par like yours is for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because you're uh, well. You you live in the Northeast. Uh, old Coon and Bud down in Arkansas wants to know if you're heated or cooled. So, I am heated. I do. I use a turbine heater, and I do have a kerosene heater when it's just cool. I'll use a kerosene heater, but when it's really cold, I use my turbine because then it gets a. Uh, it'll warm the room up pretty good. Um, I do not have any cooling in this room as of yet. Um, that's something I am seriously considering because this room gets very hot in the summer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cause he's up in Pennsylvania. So mostly cold once in a while, hot, but, um, yeah, I, uh, Craig wants to know if you'll, you do a tour for him if he comes to come back when he comes back. <laughs> to the rest. Oh yeah. I've, I've actually had, uh, events here. I've had two different events here to do. Uh, and a lot of times and my shop's open to anybody close by who wants to come and build a cache or wants to work on a cache. Um, just reach out to me and I'll gladly share my, the space. Very cool. Um, Chad from the, the, that show you're talking about the award-winning gadget mm -hmm. talk says he loves seeing other cash creator shops and tools they use to make stuff. So thank you, Chad. Yeah. Well, Chad, I've seen your shop and I don't even hold a candle. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen all the and <laughs> It's different though. What's interesting is that mm -hmm. he, I mean, it kind of can be specialized and have to be, but it can kind of be specialized. You know, uh, Chad's got a lot of electronics, got a lot going on there. Um, you know, yours is more what I consider a, a West Virginia, Tim, uh, workshop. Is that kind of maybe where you you would model your shop after? Yeah, a little bit. I have seen some of the stuff he's had in his, he doesn't show a whole lot of what he has. Um, and I like, there's a couple tools I, I'm watching for. I'd like to have a, a nice bandsaw or a bandsaw. Sure. Um, I just picked up a, uh, and this is where, like a lot of the tools I have, I have not. 
Oh. oh. And connection in the workshop can be a little. Yeah. We lost sketchy. him for a second. We'll get him back up. Sketchy. You know, somebody uh, behind the cash just said each, each shop has its own character. Yeah. And I think that's a good way of describing it because, um, well, it looks like somebody's going to fix the shop camp up. Oh, here we go. We got him. Oh, back. <laughs> um, and really it is right. You, you don't need every tool in the world. You just need the tools that you're going to use. He's back. So, yeah. There we go. Um, okay. Yeah. Yep. No problem. And we can, I get a lot of my tools. I was going to say, we, we can kill, you know, kill the shop cam. I can kick that one out if you want. Yeah, I can, uh, yeah, you can kill the, sh the shop cam. That should help quite a bit. Help a little bit. And you can put that on the pocket. I'll say. There it goes. Yeah. Uh, that'll get rid of some of your, you know, you might want to make sure your phone's not, make sure you, you're out of there as well. I mean, you know, shut your, shut your phone. Uh, make sure it's out of stream yards, all I'm saying. So cool. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk, we're going to talk more in a minute about, uh, there we go. Okay. No problem. Yeah. I had, a, I had a helper come out and help me. So that's what I was oh, great. There you <laughs> go. That's always good. Um, yeah. So, uh, we were, we were discussing about tools. I think, uh, well, we, we were mentioning about how each shop has a little bit of different, uh, feel to it, personality to it, but. Yeah, get into I, that'd be a good thing to talk about. Let's talk a little bit about kind of where you got all your tools or or how you approach getting your tools. Well, Santa Claus has been very good to me. Yay, Santa! <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I do put on my uh, wish list every year for Santa and that helps. Uh, but a lot of it um, comes from yard sales. Uh, private sales, Facebook Messenger or Facebook Marketplace, mm. Craigslist. Um, I watch those. Uh, Harbor Freight is a great place to buy tools if you're not mm. going to use them hard. Right. Um, I, I typically go, if there's a tool I want, I'll go to Harbor Freight and buy it first. Yeah. And if it lasts me five years and I have to buy it again, sweet deal, great. If I buy it, it lasts me three months, then I go buy a better because then yeah. I'm using it too much. Yeah. And that's kind of the, you know, buy the tool that's going to fit what you're doing. Um, my, like I said, my son and I share some of my tools that all those big red toolboxes are all his. Um, and he's getting ready to move into his own house. So I'll probably lose those toolboxes, which gives me some space. Um, but it's purchasing tools that you can afford. Um, don't go out and get something that you can't, don't go in debt for something. Right. Um, right. No, that's a good point. I bought the chat. The chop saw I bought for fifty dollars, and it's like a, a two hundred dollar saw, mm -hmm. um, off a friend who was moving. And then my the stand it was mounted on with the, the rollers on. I re you really didn't get a good view of it. You might have. Um, my wife picked that up at a yard sale for ten dollars. Right. So that was a nice put together. Um, uh, I've had a circular saw and a and my uh, router given to me for helping somebody move. Oh, cool. Um, the uh my in-laws had two scroll saws so they left me have one of theirs cool um which i've used a little bit and my uh the i'm looking at it i'm drawing a blank oh my uh, drill my drill press yeah drill press uh -huh. yeah you know uh i picked that up for 35 yeah and uh that was i can't beat that well and and that's a good example of it's and this is something we were kind of talking about even all really one of our themes tonight is you don't need, you know, the a thousand dollar drill press. I mean, you get one that works, that does what you need to build a cash. Right. You know, and that's the kind of thing that I think that was really what we, what we all talked about prior to doing the show was I want to show, a, I don't want to show Adam Savage's yeah. shop. Because he's got a bigger budget than most of us. Yeah. He's making millions of dollars and, um, you know, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so uh, Adi's saying you need to do a, a show. Uh, uh, yeah, there you go. A uh, combination. Oh, we're both clicking on it. Sorry. Go ahead. You got it. Need to do a Harbor Freight versus Home Depot episode. Yeah. You know that's, that's actually a good comment. So he's joking about it. However, 
what you just mentioned, I think is important because we have people in, in the chat room right now that are going to listen to the show that have tons of build experience. We yeah. also oh, had yeah. somebody ask what a Dremel was. Yeah. So there's a wide range of knowledge and experience on a lot of these tools. And I love that you said you got some stuff from yard sales because there's some people in here that are just now, they got into geocaching and they've always done other things throughout life. They've never even considered building something or building up a workshop. So I think it's great that you mentioned one, you got stuff secondhand and two, that's yard sale. Unlike many other things in life, you don't have oh, to, yeah. to drive to drive the mailbox, right? You need get what works for you. Harbor freight for a lot of home stuff is good and used tools are okay. They still work. They're going to work for a long time if they're, you know, if they're halfway decent. So um, I'm glad that you mentioned that because a lot of people are like, I can't invest that much money in starting off to build, but you can do a lot with just a handsaw, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah. A hand, a, like I said, that miter box and handsaw, I used that for years exclusively before I even got a uh, power saw. Mm -hmm. And you can use it for wood cutting. You can use it for, you know, cutting plastic. Um, and that, and it's a nice cut. It does a nice job. It may take you an extra two minutes to use it. And it's good. It, it, it does the job. A powered uh, drill is cheap compared to a cordless drill. Yeah. But it, honestly, a I like my power drill sometimes because you don't have to worry about the battery going dead. And you can continue. And do, if you're doing a lot of work to, at a time, mm -hmm. it, it's beneficial that way. Yeah. Um, a lot of things, too, though, like you mentioned your miter box, which is just a little piece of plastic. I mean, it's yeah. a tiny, very simple thing, but you'll never rebuy that. You never, re unless you just catch it on fire for somehow. <laughs> I've had the same miter box, which is like a little yellow plastic box for like 25 years. The exact same uh, one. They don't wear out. You know what I mean? Now, you can break anything. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff generally doesn't just wear out. You know, there's a lifespan on everything. But a lot of the things that you buy, you'll unless you just totally destroy the, the blade on a, a handsaw, it'll last. Handsaw doesn't run out of batteries. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. it lasts you for a long time. You can get it resharpened and stuff. But um, yeah, it's a good point about Harbor Freight. They do have a lot of coupons. So that's something. And, you know, we were talking earlier about Harbor Freight versus Home Depot. You know, I don't really see them as a, a, opposing one versus the other. Um, you know, something like Dan mentioned, the fact that Harbor Freight, um, some of the stuff is junk. I mean, other stuff isn't. So it's kind of, but then that same thing with Home Depot. There's stuff at Home Depot that's, that's kind of junk, but a lot of their stuff is quality too, or, or Lowe's. I don't, you know, whoever you've got, but uh, I like the way, I like the way you put this, Dan, and that was you buy it at Harbor Freight. If it immediately breaks, you never buy that product, <laughs> that particular product again from them. But if it, it lasts for five years, then you're like, okay. You get your money out of it for sure. Yeah, you just don't make the same mistake twice. But uh, well, look, a lot of it, it has to do with how much did you use it in that three months or five yeah. months. Five you know, now, right. if you use it every day, like if it's a tool that you're going to go out and you're using that every day and you buy it at Harbor Free, it's not going to last you three months. You're going to get uh, – yeah. So many uses out of a Harbor Freight tool or you're going to get so many uses out of a Milwaukee tool. I mean, the numbers are different, but you're still going to get um, something else about Harbor Freight that a lot of people don't understand. Like the wrenches and like you see in a lot of my wrenches hanging on the wall, mm -hmm. um, they have lifetime warranties on them. Yeah. And yeah. that's the difference between Pittsburgh tools, which is what's on there, and uh, Snap-on tool, which you're going to spend a couple hundred dollars for the same tool set is – the difference in the fit on the bolt. A snap on tool is going to be a perfect fit on if it's a 916 bolt, a 916 snap on is going to be a perfect fit every time. Right. If you're using a, a Pittsburgh tool, there's going to be just a little bit of play. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be mm -hmm. just, and that's the difference um between a high quality tool and a, and a cheaper tool is, is the variance in the how tight it is. If you're turning wrenches for a living, you're going to spend the money for a snap on because you don't want to be stripping bolts. Right. If you're a farmer like me, most of the time the bolt you're putting on is rusted anyway, and it's <laughs> thicker than it's supposed to be. Oh. Or yep. you're going to end up torching it with a <laughs> with a saw anyhow. So just to try it with a wrench is at least a shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
uh, Electric Waterboy mentioned earlier something that, and something that, that Jesse mentions about a, about Dremel. Um, so that's something let's take a moment and, and, and talk about because a lot of people, like you said, aren't as familiar with the Dremel. Um, so I guess, yeah, Dan's going to grab his Dremel. We'll kind of talk about, uh, I think, uh, just finding our way says he doesn't miss having one and that's fine. I mean, d- different people have different, Oh, different tools for everybody, right? Different tools. I, I like using a Dremel because well, one, if I break the blade, they're cheap. I usually have a handful of them depending on what I'm making, but, um, I like, I like a Dremel, um, because typically for a cache, depending on the size, but obviously, but when you're making some of the smaller caches or if you're working for it with a small birdhouse, say for example, Mm -hmm. you know, a Dremel is a good size to hold and to, to make your cuts or whatever you need to make because, um, it's not, tends to not be very bulky or, you know, you know, what's funny about that is I've had a Dremel for years and I've only used it maybe a couple dozen times. Right. Um, and it's always been for like, um, like inscribing something or, you know, a really small thing, but every yeah. birdhouse I built, I never bought the Dremel out. I use the, you know, the, the other tools every single time. So it's kind of funny, you know, table saw or whatever else. So it's, it's not just the tool. It's what you're doing with it and how you prefer to use it. Right. Right. No, you're exactly right. Yeah. Craftsman Darwolf says, but you know, uh, I don't know who's carrying craftsman tools anymore. I mean, that back in the Ace day, hardware. Who does? Ace Hardware carries. Oh, Ace is carrying oh. it. Okay, there you go. Uh, I guess that's his. That reminded me when you said that. Uh, you know, Craftsman was the kind. If you broke a tool or whatever, you ran over it. They they take it back to the the Sears. They give you a, give you the same one again. Yeah, I have several Craftsman tools that I've used over the years. Mm-hmm. So Dremel, tell us about how you're using a Dremel or what you're tend to use it for. I. Tend to use it my Dremel, and it's just it, what it is is a rotary tool. Um, it, this just spins at a real high speed of rate, uh, and it allows you to sand in a more intricate spacing than like yep. a block sander or whatever would. Mm-hmm. And they come with all kind. I, I just got a simple kit here, yeah. and I've got you know all kinds of stuff in there that I can use to sand or cut, um, hone out the inside of it. And then I also have a Dremel on steroids. Um, this is a, uh, it's the same yeah. type tool. It's just bigger. Um, actually it works almost like a router because it's just, and I have a router bit in it. That's what router I use. Bit. Yeah. Um, and that'll, you know, and that allows you to do the things you need to do to cut, um, whatever project you're working on. Right. Now that's, uh, that's very cool. like, like this is a, you've heard of the sword and the stone caches. Yep. Yeah. Some people have it, so we'll talk about it. Yeah, that's good. Well, and this is how you, you know, you got to solve. You just got to pull it out. Yep. You got to keep going and try to. And you got to twist and pull the angle. And I use the uh, router to cut this. And there's that's the way I did mine. Yeah. But uh, if you look at these, my angles, what I did was I actually had that bracketed in my, and I draw, drew my pattern. Yep. And then as I ran it through, it was actually in reverse to my pattern was so as i went i could follow my uh jig that i'd made to allow me to cut through it cool so that is cool i like that that is um we were talking about that the other day is like um uh, i've never found one in the wild like that and you're like really that's that but jesse have you found one in the wild i have not i mean a similar concept but never with like the sword and the stone concept on there Uh, right you know, I found some of the PVCs where you open them like yeah, a box yeah. or whatever, but not never the sword of stone. But I like that. I think that would be a great one. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to copy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't no. own the rights. <laughs> well, no. uh, what? Oh, do you have a cash of your own that you put out like that? That is actually what I'm waiting to do. Is I have to form the rock to put the stone okay. in. So I'm going to make a cement. So I'm going to put a cement. I'm, I'm thinking. Of, probably going to do is take a cement bucket at an angle and just fill the bucket with cement and then break the, uh, some, the, the bucket off yeah. just outside of it. And then I'll have just a cement rock with the cash in it. Um, what I want to do is make sure that the bottom is out, out the bottom. So that way I don't gain water. Right. No, uh, that's good. Um, I love that idea. 
I think I want to make one of those. Well, and what's cool is Dan found one in, in kind of an unlikely place, but it makes perfect sense, is you found one in a fence pole. Yeah, metal. the chain link fence corner. It was a yeah. Chain link fence. You know how you pull the little the cap off and it's just, you know, you'll have the uh, bison tube hanging there? This one, you actually pulled the cap up and you had to follow the maze to get it out. It's so just like the sword and the stone. Love that. I, it was that was a super creative tons whoever did that had a tons of favorite points that's out in western pa i think is where i've seen it western pa or altoona area i'm not sure right See, that would play really well here because i could i could con a buddy into hiking with me and we would drag that out really far in the woods <laughs> and make, uh, you, make people work for it yeah you know and make the whole pvc part painted up looking like a sword and everything else and you can't put it in town here because it would disappear but if I drag that joker out into the woods, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. I have yeah. I have another – because we're talking about cement caches. And yep. um, I actually have a friend who made a rock out of cement. And he hit mm -hmm. it on a cache. And we spent – we went – it was a two-stage multi. It was like a half-mile hike out to the, to the first stage. And then it was just a tag with him. And you hike all the way back to almost to the parking lot, within 100 meters of the parking lot. Mm-hmm. And there was a group of 20 of us doing this cash and we searched high, <laughs> high and low for this cash. We right. protect every rock, moved everything. The one lady with us sat down on the rock and it rattled. Oh, wow. Like a ah, can rattle. That's and awesome. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> and that kept, he actually, the guy quit cashing and so he pulled the cash and I, I messaged him and says, can I have, if you have that container, can I have it? And he gave it to me. So uh, I'm really, this is a, this isn't a small container at all. Whoa. Yeah. That's, that's good size. I mean, you see that and it's, I mean, this that's is a pretty good heavy. Yeah. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. It depends on where you put it. Is that a full size ammo can under it? That is a full size ammo can box in there. That is great. This is a, this is one of my, I, I can't wait to hide it. Um, everybody from PA who's watching. Yeah. Them, I'm not gonna <laughs> right. tell, them, tell them to look away. We can't let them see that. Um, no, that's, but, that's a great one. But the guy took some serious time in uh, making that. And, cement, and it, when you look at it, you're like, Oh yeah. All right. I can see the stone and the cement and all that. But when you're, Looking for something else. Is that um, one heavy, it, Dan? Uh, probably about 20, 25 pounds. So not too bad. It's, not too bad, but it, it's not something I'm going to hike a couple miles into the woods with. <laughs> right. Oh, <why> no, no. <laughs> Strap it on your back and go, buddy. Um, no, that's cool. Actually, there's a place I've, I've got in mind to put in. It's going to be probably a quarter mile or so or better into where I'm going to put it. Right. And uh, my wife said, we'll just take the stroller, put it in the baby stroller. and we'll, right. we'll, <laughs> That's a great idea. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, one of those all terrain ones. Yeah. Yep. I have grandkids now. So that's, you know, <laughs> are there, oh, man. I uh, found one of those caches, which, Oh yeah. Just you the audience that, Cause I just, you, you've got me intrigued. All right. Oh Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Adi, Adi found one. So you're trying to yeah, that's the one I looked up. Look at this. Oh There's nice. The there, there yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That, that's very cool. That's there's a sword in the stone. That's sword the stone. That's the same yep. design you've got there. That's great. You, how do yeah. you, you can't tell me that's not a favorite point magnet right there? <laughs> oh, definitely. You bring definitely. kids after that, they get to pull the sword out of the stone. That's the best. Yeah, I think, and that one's a much better well done than what I'm doing. But yeah, you, it's you, and like I said, that comes down to tools. What tools do you have to do something? Because like, if you would do one of these with out of metal, like the sword and the stone, mm -hmm. you'd need a plasma cutter to do that. Yeah. Now plasma cutters, you can buy them for about two hundred dollars for the cheaper ones, but they're typically around two thousand for a Ooh. really good one. So, so <laughs> because. Because you made you're making yours out of PVC and like that one looks like it's PVC. Maybe it's metal. Yeah. Who knows? Um, you used it with just a router, right? But yeah, step up I did a, a full time, a big tool. <laughs> nope, that was an easy router. Um, and I made a jig to actually. Um, let me give it. I'll show you. Yep. 
Something else that we, uh, will, I think will be interesting. Oh, he's back. Yeah. Oh, another like, one. See what right here is. Now, I did steal one of my, I had two of these here. And you can see where it was mounted. And then I had the, my router bit would stick up through here. Right. And then I had a, a black line right there. Oh, gotcha. And then I just, and I would trade, and I would just turn as I needed it and fed it through. And it made it, it, it cut really nice. Actually, it, about the third or fourth try. Um, and that was the thicker PVC, which was nicer because the thin PVC, like if you're going to do something like that, you want to go with at least the Schedule 40 or the heavier PVC. Right. The router will chip. Yeah, your cut wider than it's supposed to on a on the thinner stuff because your it vibration. Yeah, um, your PVC will vibrate more and you'll get more play. So, but PVC, we could do a whole show about PVC really for. That's classes. what you make the uh, the little bombs out of, right? That gets the police called. The PVC, <laughs> you just put it. Put sometimes, bomb right sometimes, it. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, 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 why, that's why you got to be careful with the PVC. Make it look like a pipe bomb. Not a good idea. Oh, there we Does go. Does this look like a pipe bomb? Yes. <laughs> I probably wouldn't put it in an urban area. I like that. I love that. That's a hidden. Uh, that's a cool. That's like a hidden maze cache, right? To me, yeah. it actually looks like a door ram, but. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. true. That's, like, that's my <laughs> first thought, too. Post pounder. What are you talking about? It's what the police police carry one of those to, right? Jesse, you used to probably carry one of those. Yeah, they work really well on a door. <laughs> Damn, they're, the door's going <laughs> down. Police, stand away from the door. <laughs> yeah, let's. Yeah, we need to move on. That's a different show altogether. That's oh, a whole show. <laughs> Get into my and life. This is all PVC. This is all plastic yeah. PVC. You just painted up, and it's just got a padlock in there. Um, the hardest part was drilling my hole for the for the top mechanism, um, and I didn't have a drill press at that time, so I did it with a hand drill. So my hole is in a perfect that straight through. It kind of goes yeah. at an angle, so mm -hmm. you can only put it back together one way. <laughs> right. So but, for some people who don't hold that one up again, because I. I think some people have never maybe found one like that. I've only found one, I think, like that. But uh, kind of explain, yeah, explain to people how that cache works, if you would. Um, I call it a monkey cache because yeah. you spend more kind of time monkeying around with it. And <laughs> essentially, these are two hollow tubes, and there's two chambers right here. The this thick part here with the collar is that there's a block there, and uh, there's a key. At this end, up here where the padlock is, there's a key in this block, and you got to get it through one of these tubes down to the lower chamber, mm -hmm. and then out of the lower chamber into this tube, and then yep. these uh, caps come right off, and you can get to the key. Right. And uh, I'm not going to try and solve it, but basically you have to hop the key yep. by shaking it. you got to yep. hop the key into the, into the tube. <laughs> what makes it a challenge is that... You don't know which tube's the right tube. Right. <laughs> I've seen the one-handled tubes, which are easier to do because you know you only got one hand on. The one I did was a three-handle tube. Oh. So you spent hours listening for that right click. Yeah, exactly the perfect moment. Yeah, when you know it's gone down the right one. Because, yeah, I love that because then you've got at the other end, you've got the lock, and there's your key, and then you can open up the cache. So, yeah, that's so – Start to finish on that one right there. What tools did you use? Huh. A saw. A so could be down a hand saw up to a full yeah, good. Just, I think I used, I think I had to use, because this is a four inch PVC. I think I had to use just my hand saw because I don't have a saw big enough to cut it. Uh, so I used the hand saw and a drill. That's okay. it. Cool. And then it's purchasing the pieces this is the only thing that made this expensive is that your four inch pvc pipe something else to keep in mind most of your local uh i don't know if lowe's will do it or home depot but if you go mm -hmm. and say hey i want a piece of pipe this size they will cut it to size for you right. i know yeah. i have a local uh, hardware store that i just absolutely love because they treat me so well if there's right. something i need they they you know I, if i need it cut for me they'll cut it or if they want if i need something done um how do you return the key? Well, when you 
when you unlock the when this unlocks, the pin slides out, and uh, you just drop it back in that top chamber. So you don't? Uh, they don't mail it back to you? No. <laughs> no. no. I'm, I'm, gonna, grab. I'm gonna grab the key. I'm gonna grab my key for it, and I'll open it up, and I can show you the inside. Yeah, go ahead. So. Um, this you always know, makes me want to start building something. Every time we have somebody on, I, like a builder. I know. It always makes me really want to start. I always want to go build one. I know. Yeah, I build get, one, you know. Gets the juices flowing. Get excited. It does. It does. I have a few that I, I've got in mind too. That Tad's got me sparked on from his show that I want to. I want to build, but I got to get some home projects done before I can start tearing up the workshop again. So. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I had I I replaced one yesterday. That uh, when I replaced it, I did use kind of a hide in plain sight kind of cache. So mm -hmm. I was pretty happy with the replacement. I think you should give out the GC on your puzzle so we can mess with all the people in your yeah, area. Yeah, everybody wants to follow a puzzle that's not published yet. I'll give you the I'll give you the code here in a minute. Yeah, but it, but when it's published and a bunch of people go and put a watch, everybody in your area will freak out. They will freak out. Well, no, the, the somebody from anywhere could probably drive clear over here someday and find it because I don't think anybody's going to find this anytime soon. But go ahead, Dan. Back to you, buddy. Okay. Oh, no problem. We're um, busy having our own conversations here. That's okay. Uh, this is the key. You know, I had to uh, cut the key down from uh, this size. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. My key, and then I just I used the grinder to cut this down. So I did use another tool that I. Yeah, I mentioned grinder. Cool. Um, so, and then here's the uh, the plug that was at the top, and uh, I just had a bison tube in there, or the one I had found had written the stage two in the cap. Ah, I like it. Mmm, gotcha. And then you just went, you went part, and then uh, the inside is that. Now I used a. Uh, you can see that the short pipe is the dummy pipe. Yeah, um, and the long one is the uh, one, and I think I I used, I think I bought like a one inch to a two inch expander, like it would go, so that way it had a little bit of a like a funnel top. Yeah. So it give a, gives a little bit of an advantage to the. Still trying to find the camera on this. No, that's <laughs> but, in there. That's good. No, you got it. It's perfect. And then so, you just you're you're kind of trying to catch the the key in that cup. Yeah, so. that's a pretty good, and they're called monkey caches where I come from too. Although they yeah. don't, I don't find those out in the wild in my area very often. But that's a again, once again, if you're trying to search for favorite points or really provide some enjoyment, that's one of them right there, right? People have a lot of fun with those, and you made that with really simple tools. Um, so I guess kind of since we have such a wide range of people, you know, that are going to listen to this or whatever. And we don't want to assume knowledge or no knowledge or whatever, but if somebody was going to start from the very beginning, like they have no tools other than like maybe a screwdriver, what's the first, where would you start? Like that doesn't have an, like let's assume we're not talking about Adam Savage, right? With an unlimited budget to buy whatever thing he wants, right? Which all of our dream job, right? But um, <laughs> what would you start with in the very beginning? Maybe the first couple tools or whatever. Uh, the first tool I'd buy is buy the miter box and a miter saw. That that's like I said, that's a cheap, multi-purpose tool. Like I said, that box will last forever. That little plastic box, and then it just—it's a nice starter to help you learn to cut straight lines. Mm -hmm. um, it really helps you get that. Um, a hacksaw would be another one that's a cheap tool to buy that cuts, or even a even a full set long um, arm handsaw that I probably haven't used one of those in you know. 10 years um and then a drill um any three-eighths drill is all you need uh and then drill bits you can get away if you're especially if you're working with pvc you can get away with a cheap set of drill bits you're probably not going to break too many drill bits in pvc mm -hmm. you start cutting drilling into metal then you're going to start having issues um a miter box you'll go grab it we'll show it to you it really is helpful because it keeps you from making as I'm sure Jesse, you and I, well, I know I have. Oh yeah. Yeah. I can't cut a straight line I do a in my life. So go ahead. Yeah. It's just a Yeah. And that's you know, and like you say, it shows your angles of what you're gonna do, you know, your, your 45 degree angles. And you can even actually has a, a bracket here at the end that you can cut at yeah. an angle that way. So and then this is just a miter saw blade. It's not 
It's a nice fine tooth blade, so it's good for cutting all kinds of materials. And like I said, I've had this 20 years, maybe 25 years. Oh, yeah. And uh, I still, I mean, I don't use it a lot because I have the chop saw now. But uh, till then, when I was trying to do any kind of angles, this is what I used. Oh, uh, Craig's saying his shirt's in the corner there. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> okay. No, show, show a shirt. The one up there, the, all the triangles are the squares on it. Triangles. That's cool. That's oh. awesome. Yeah, it's funny. Everybody in the. Uh, oh, I know the one right next to me at, at an event. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's funny because as you walked around, there's a couple travel bug numbers out there, and people are, oh, oh wait, wait, the travel bug. Oh, I missed it. Like, oh my gosh, I missed the travel bug. <laughs> I guess there's one on a file cabinet yeah. somewhere. Mm, nope, that's not yeah. a travel bug on the file cabinet. That's the, that's actually a cache, a magnetic cache. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dan, go go grab it. Is that the one with the TM on it? Yeah. Not okay, I saw it. Um, what it was is the and. It was a log just a tape yeah. to the back of it. Yeah. And uh, that was, but it's not considered in a container. So what if you do it now, you have to put it in a Ziploc bag and then put it behind the magnet. Yeah. So yeah. it's in a container. So right. exactly. we want to follow the guidelines, right? Oh, exactly. man, of course. <laughs> we never put the guideline. That what would be wrong. Yeah, exactly. That would be wrong. <laughs> As in putting like a nail in a tree. That's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Unless that tree's going to be fine. Unless the tree's <laughs> dead. Um, so what are some couple – I got a couple questions for One is, um, is there a particular tool that you will tend to carry with you if you're going to go try to you know, do cash maintenance other than uh, the standard knife and everything else? Is there some particular – I carry my cordless drill everywhere. When I go, really like if I'm going drill? out with cash maintenance, I take my cordless drill with me because a lot of times if I'm going to fix something, that'll help me cut it. Or, you know, like I said, I have a lot of birdhouses out too, and that okay. way I can just open them up, get into them. And uh, like I said, the the evolution of the uh, birdhouse cash is the, the best thing ever. Right. Um, That's cool. And uh, – Now – Go ahead, kind of a separate question, but do you use any kind of secu uh, like security bolts or screws when you're putting those out? I love the uh, star screw uh, mm -hmm. with the uh, star head. Um, it that's it, a great. Most people don't have the ability. Like my Leatherman has a, a flat head and a and a Phillips head, but it doesn't have a screw the uh, the star bit on it. And uh, do you, does everybody know what a star bit screw looks like? I can show you one. I've got a whole bag of them over here. Pretty much like a, I mean, it's a star. You can grab one if you want. Yeah. There's, a, there's a couple other, you know, that's something, Jesse. I know that it's very West Virginia. Tim likes doing that where he'll use different, uh, different kinds of, of, of screws yeah. so that it's harder for people to, yeah, people don't have it all because people will, yeah, yeah. there's a star. Yeah. People that's will take them apart, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and there's a the square one. The square ones are kind of cool. You don't see them as often. Yeah, I use all different types of screws. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, I have a – my square ones tend to work better. Have Some the squares I have have Phillips parts too. So you can use a Phillips one, but they're really hard to turn because they're that middle's wide open. Mm -hmm. But it works really good with a square. Um, I do use some timber locks on occasion. Um, I use a wide variety of stuff on the farm to try and make things stay together. Goats are very destructive. <laughs> <laughs> and so are pigs, right? Um, like so, I, I've got I've got a star head screw that's about six inches long. That's for screwing something into the neighbor's farm from here. <laughs> <laughs> that's how is, right? No, that's good. So, uh, and I've even seen we've been trying to get some one time, kind of an anti theft one. You, I don't know if people have seen that, but there's a kind that you got you got to make sure you get it just right because. It only lets you go one. It only lets you tighten it. it. Won't let you unloosen it. It's got the it's got the flanges on it on the on the screw so that you can tighten it. But then there's nothing other than you know ripping it out with something else. But oh, yeah, yeah. You make sure you put that together perfectly. <laughs> yeah, you do because that one's not coming off. That's usually for something like high public area. Maybe that's yeah. That's, you know. I've seen them like on bathroom stalls. Yeah, so it you know, makes that it easier. Tight. Yeah, people can't. You're right. Exactly. 
Um, so what are what are some now that we've got people some of the basic tools yeah. that we mentioned? Uh, what are some of the basic uh, caches that you think would be good for people to start with? Uh, I, one, I like the PVC. PVC is simple, easy. You can do a lot of forgiveness. Like right. if you cut a pipe too long, you know, always cut long because you can always shorten it. Yep. Uh, so, you know, cut, you know, measure twice, cut once, and, you mm -hmm. know. You know, I usually cut twice and then measure and forgot. Oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's why I have this whole bin of scrap. Of yeah. PVC pipe at different lengths. Start with them a little um, longer because, like you said, it's harder to try to put another piece onto it. That's right. Yeah. Start over. I, I, I still haven't found the board stretcher yet. So um, I know it's out there, but I, I haven't found it in on for sale anywhere. Yeah. Uh, I heard about it when I was a kid, but I never found it. <laughs> but, uh, Bird houses are real easy. Yeah. Um, one, you're it's you're you're doing either 90 degree cuts or you're doing a 45 degree angle or just slight angles and you're putting a box together. Sure. Um, and you, a couple screws and you have a nice put together birdhouse. And then all you need is a hinge, and um, then you can have any kind of gadget cache. Like I have, I have a bird house that I took. Uh, I left a bottle. And then I, I mean, where the uh, the roost would be is actually have a screw in there with or a bolt with right. duct tape around it, so that way you can't push it all the way in. And then I took a four by four, cut the fit into the hole, and then you, when you put the the oh, cool. bolt in, it holds the four by four up in the hole. And then I just have a cash container inside the four by four. And that was using, you know, I use a saw, a drill, and. Um, I think I use my chop saw on that one to cut my angles. Um, the the chop saw or radio arm saw is probably the best tool. I use that more than any other tool in my shop. Oh wow! Um, okay. Because you, especially if you're cutting it, I can cut angles real quick, or I can just I walk over, drop, cut it, and walk back, and I'm done. It it don't. It's not like when you're using a circular saw. Sometimes I've done this. I've I uh, use some locks and put it on a table and that way I can cut a long stretch on plywood. You know, right. Using a, and I tell you what, it's hard to cut a straight line with a circular saw. Yes. Yeah. You're <laughs> so, all over the, yeah. I think anybody, unless you, unless you have something to hold in place, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there's, um, and uh, somebody mentioned there's in the chat room about unique screws. That's always neat, but, which what, what got there, Tom? Yeah, so Tom yeah. mentioned safety glasses or goggles, and I think before we, we would be remiss if we did not mention that, right? If somebody's building up their workshop, you mentioned earlier yeah. safety is important, but we need we to didn't go over a lot of safety tools. Yeah, yeah um, what are the ones you got? I, honestly, I went on Amazon. I bought a, I think I bought two 12 pack or 12 pack of, of uh, safety glasses. Oh, cool. And they were a piece. So it was like 12 bucks. And I have 12 or, or and more safety glasses and I use them as I, I, I forget a lot of times, but I do have like a pair of safety glasses everywhere. I have like four or five of them just hanging on my desk, my right. uh, workshop desk that I just drop and put on. And uh, I found uh, safety glasses are probably the most important tool. Um, they do have some uh, gloves out there you can buy that will actually stop the saw. Um, I haven't invested in them. Um, but then I, I use a lot of push sticks and I've made push sticks if I don't have them and I use them to push something through my router or use them to push it through my table saw ear protection. I can't hear anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that is, that is smart. Yeah. And, uh, you know, ear plugs yep. you know, the, mm -hmm. the phone one or the, uh, or the head over the ear ones. Yep. Um, it does get noisy and, uh, you're, you're dealing with like if especially if you're drilling uh metal that gets you get a, some high oh, pitched yeah. sounds absolutely well and, and you got to be careful you gotta wear some sort of eye protection yep mm -hmm. so Safe, you know. safety glasses yeah are probably your your most important because your eyes are hard to They're hard to know. replace yeah they yeah. don't they don't grow if you lose your if you lose sight they're hard it's hard to have it grow back yeah <laughs> it's not gonna happen 
So as they're messing around in the chat room, they're about eyes and seeing is overrated. Well, yeah. I, don't, I don't think so. You, you've got two eyes. You only need one, right? <laughs> <laughs> I suggest keeping both. But yeah, you got to really, you know, really do need to be careful. I, I like the idea. I forgot. You know, th that's the thing that. Like I, I tend to watch Adam Savage's one one day builds and he does not, I mean, he, he's built, he used to work for, you know, um, work for Lucas. So, I mean, star Wars, he knows, you know, he knows all about how, you know, building and so forth, but he'll do the same thing. Like you said, is he'll have around there a couple different of those push sticks. Cause you don't want your fingers near that saw when it's going. That's why you yeah. use, a, use a, uh, you know, a piece of a, uh, another piece of wood or something to push it through. That's always yeah, smart. I yeah, I don't have a PVC. Uh, I've seen some plastic one. And uh, if you watch Derek Baker's uh, Behind the Cash, mm -hmm. um, you should see some of the stuff he uses with his saws that are really nice. That do a great job. Mm -hmm. That um, and they're just you can and but just by looking at them, you can see how how nice they are. Uh, and it's like the more you use a tool, uh, the more you got to be safe because yeah. you get complacent using it yes absolutely so, cool um all right well um we're, we're jesse where do you want to where we where are we moving to next or are we starting to wrap up yeah uh, i think before we wrap up i think this is good to kind of summarize what we're talking about so you have a great shop and some of the big Thank components you. start small buy what you need um safety is important you know a lot of times you're going to be in your shop by yourself too and i've made exactly. more to the ER with blood squirting out and everything else. It just happens, right? So even trying to be safe, it's still stuff's going to happen. Um, but, and, you know, get the minimum tools you need. But I think one of the things that is really helpful in looking at your shop, you keep yours really organized. That is such a benefit. That's not my natural state, right? Um, <laughs> or mine. <laughs> the fact that you have it really organized like that, though, if you know where your tools are, if you know where all your pieces are, you're able to really move through and it speeds you up a lot. Now getting organized in the first place may be hard, but I think when you go into an organized shop and you know where everything is, you know, it's, it, it makes all the difference in the world. And, and I know we don't even have time to barely touch on that. Right. But I'm sure you spent some time getting that thing organized like that. I, when I moved into the shop, I spent a lot of time and a couple months before we'd moved in like a like year or two before we built a shop, I had, organized my garage we were i was sharing the garage with my car and everything else so my wife and i we started up a bucket system um we went and get sh the plastic shoe boxes and all my phillips head to go into one uh shoe box all my flatheads in another and the other my wrenches or uh, pliers in another one and then you can break them down as the, the variety of tools you have but like i have it set up so that everything is, has its own bath so it's not hard to put it away so like if i have Phillips heads, I can throw them right all back into the Phillips head bucket and then they're safe. I know where they're at. And uh, I have a lot of multiples, uh, multiples of every tool simply from uh, getting sets and buying sets. And then, you know, then you mix everything up and then, you know, you lose one or two of that, two of that set because you use a screwdriver thing for things that screwdrivers aren't meant to be used for. Yeah. Um, and exactly. so, by organizing it out that way has made a big difference. And then I have like, you see my wrenches hanging there, like the one set came like that. So it made it really easy just to screw it up on the wall. And I, that's the set I make sure everything gets put back. You know, and then I have a couple other sets with um, that are hanging. And that way when there's something missing, that drives me nuts. So I go make sure I put that back. <laughs> right. And sockets aren't as easy to keep organized, um, but I do have a, Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone forgets I don't have hair until I <laughs> scratch my head. Um, then I have like drawers, like all my one size in this drawer, one size in that drawer. And then I only have keep, I have a bucket of like spare sockets yeah. uh, from left, leftover sets or missing sets. And then I keep a full set in my, my chest of, uh, drawers. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I just think there's not enough can be said about having an organized shop, right? I mean, if, it, if it makes all the difference. Yeah, I didn't know that. Hey, we're free used to give away screwdriver sets. That's kind of cool. They uh they have a lot of giveaways, uh. But as Dan mentioned earlier, 
Those are probably not your lifetime tools. No, those are giveaways. Are keeping your car for little bitty projects, mm -hmm. a lot of projects. You're not going to go to work with those tools that they're giving away. No, you know, and we don't. We're not sponsored yet by Harbor Freight. Another one, a Northern Tool and Equipment's another good store. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have to work sponsorships. Uh, yeah. yeah, Harbor Freight keeps getting mentioned uh, on this, uh, you know, here and then also in Gadget Talk. So. I need to contact them, see if we can get some. <laughs> get some. You know, what do you expect? Like, we're not, not that we're bagging on Harbor Freight because they do good stuff, right? But if you, if you buy a tool for $7, don't expect it to last a lifetime. Yeah. You know, that's, that's not what that's designed for. That's designed for a, a cheap version of a tool that's used for light, yep. light duty stuff. Yep. One, one or two use and then it's to be retired. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's something too, I think that we, as we start to wrap up is, as you start to do some of these things, you'll notice that there are certain tools that you might use more often. Therefore, you might want to get, you yeah. might want to spend a little extra. It's worth investing in. It is worth investing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and there's a difference, right? Like, so I grew up and my family was in construction and my dad was an electrician. Right. And uh, we had tools that I could use in the garage. He taught me how to do, you know, all kinds of stuff. But he had his tools, right? That was different. Like he would go to work with tools. That's not the same as the stuff you buy for Harbor Freight. He right. was a professional with his stuff. It, and, you know, he knew exactly where everything was. And um, it's it was – everything was exactly where he had it. You know, I did not mess with those tools because I did not want to mess anything up that he went to work with, right? No. That's not the stuff you're buying in Harbor Freight. And you, but you, there's a big difference. And he would invest in those because he used those. Those were the tools of the trade that he used, right? Those were not like our tools of the trade, but their tools of trade. Oh, look at that. Craig found it. He found it. <laughs> he found it. He did it. And he found it. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Craig, for the you, uh, Craig. sticker. Um, we haven't even mentioned it, but there is a little gray uh, dollar sign down there if you'd like to give a tip to the show. Um, you know what? That's a perfect time to mention it. It's almost like Craig knew we were going to segue into something. That's but right. We want to kind of make an announcement of something that we've been able to be a part of yes. so because of this. Right. So, and, uh, uh, Dan's a part of this too. And, and there's many people in the chat room right now that are part of this too, but because we have this group and Ryan's in the chat room and Ryan let us be on part of the Mingo madness, which was, you know, we wish just happened a couple weekends ago, but you know, the world ended right. and it got pushed to September. Uh, one of the things that was going to be unveiled, at Mingo Madness. Um, I'll send it, it here. So we can talk about it. Um, is uh, a plaque to commemorate Mingo. Yes. You know, because when we started putting this together, we weren't sure, and we're still not sure that all these year 2000 caches are going to be around forever. And if they go away, we don't want to lose that historical spot. And um, so now, uh, and I can actually, let's see. You want to show it? I think I can show you that too. Um, so now I got it. Yeah, there's the picture of it. And here's the actual cache. And so there's now a virtual there at Mingo to commemorate in the, the, the city and county helped us put that up. Yep. But so the, the people listening right now and the people that are part of this show uh, and the Mingo Madness team is now commemorated forever in geocaching history because there's a plaque there approved by the state, approved by the county that is going to forever mark that spot as an important part of geocaching history. And even says Mingo Madness crew and geocache talk right at the very bottom. And, um, and there's a virtual there too. There's a virtual and, there now too. Yeah. Uh, because of the new virtual rules, everybody that visits that has to take a picture in front of that sign. So that's yeah. so and there's Stop. something, yeah, there's something hidden. There is. Sign. There is. Of course, there's something hidden on that side. Of course, and <laughs> we're not going to be a part of anything that doesn't have something hidden on there, right? Yeah. So there's another uh, there's shot a picture of it right there of the the plaque, and then of course at the bottom of the plaque, it says, you know, the plaque has been placed by the Mingo Madness team, and it was funded by Geocache Talk. So that's the patrons are the ones that did that. Yeah, and thanks to Ryan and the Mingo Madness team for well, one letting us be involved in it. But you know what? There's there's more people that we wanted to, to mention on this too. Yeah. 
the area of Mingo and Colby and whatever else have been so invited. Now we're, everybody's going to find this out in September, but it was supposed to have already happened. So now we can talk about it, but yeah, um, this place has become, they're like, they're excited about geocaching and, and we're not going to get into the Mingo show right now, but there's more stuff coming. There's labs, there's other stuff that's going to happen in this big event. And they were so excited. They were kind of sad this thing because they knew all, they all knew about it. You know, the chamber of commerce and stuff. Yeah. But if nothing else happened, the event comes and goes, there's a little new piece of geocaching history left behind for them and the people yep. of that area for a long time. And they're very involved in this coming forward. But, um, but since Craig did that event there, we're talking about money, which we don't usually talk about money. Right. So all the money supporting this show has helped us be a part of that. Absolutely. Now this show is forever a part of geocaching history. So it's very exciting. The virtual just came out um, on the anniversary and uh, it's, it's uh it's kind of cool that we're all get to be part of this thing so yeah very cool for the beginning so at least we get to be here for the 20th anniversary right yeah no absolutely um i'm looking forward to getting out there um uh, you know september road trip that's what i'm talking about seems so long so so long away but yeah it's not it's a hundred and it's about a hundred days uh i i actually have a countdown clock for it so, and we're not going to get sidetracked, but there's also other big, big stuff happening then too. 110 days. So. They have a great event plan, though. We know that we we we've, we've got to be part of this, and there's a great event plan, so it's awesome. Yeah, Ryan's like too far away. I know, but you know oh, what? Ryan's going to skip it. He's not going to go. But you know, <laughs> you know, I, I think if it's got any chance of happening this year, it had to move to September. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that was totally beyond control of everything. The world ended literally. Yeah. Uh, Dan, are you gonna make it to Mingo? Oh, no, nah, that's a little far out for me. A little far from him. He's in Pennsylvania. Somebody's asking. Uh, Did I cut, if, cut out there? Yeah, if just for briefly. That's okay. Um, so, are you? Uh, can you share your um, your GC name for people? Because I think somebody's out in Pennsylvania wants to come find some of your caches. So. <laughs> Uh, it's the trucks crew. That's that is my uh, GC name. That's uh, is it all one word? Is it the trucks is one word and crew yeah. separate? So two words. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yep. The trucks crew is his GC name. So that's perfect. Uh, all right. Well, that's that's awesome. Um, Dan, did you have anything else before we wrapped up? Uh, not really. I think uh, any questions? Anybody has anything they want? Some. Um, you are, like I said, if you got some questions or if you had some ideas and you're trying to fill them out, um, message me through uh, geocaching uh, or look me up on Facebook. We have a, uh, if you live in the central Pennsylvania area, yeah. there's a group called uh, Anna Valley Geocachers on Facebook. Um, we yeah. basically, we focus on the Susquehanna River from Westport Berwick down to Sunbury, which if you don't know those towns, then you probably aren't going to want to be a part of us, but uh, we're welcoming anyone. And we just basically is about this local area that we cash in. And that's a good way to get a hold of me and uh, find out what's going on. Very cool. Awesome. And yep. People are going crazy with that button. Thank you so much. That does help. I just wanted to make sure people realized what some of that, you know, some of that support went to, to do and they're, they're having fun with the tips in there now. So <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Even little notes in it as well. So. We appreciate it. I absolutely appreciate it. Shave club uh, memberships. That's crazy. Right. <laughs> hey, we're all, we're all grooming we're now. Be, that's one of the coolest things. We've been so excited about this thing forever. Now we finally get to talk about it. But we, this group of this show gets to be a part of geocaching history forever. Yeah. So, uh, On YouTube, I think it's a gray. At the very bottom, there's a gray dollar sign, in case you're wondering. So. Uh, thank you, Teresa. Yes. Thanks again. Appreciate, appreciate everybody. You know, and thanks Dan. Thanks for letting us into your, you know, your private, uh, your, your private workshop there. And, uh, you know, I, we definitely appreciate that. And hopefully it helps people out as they're laying things out, because I think really people we're seeing people wanting to put more and more creative containers out. And, but some people are kind of scared of where to start. This is a great, like Chad is doing some great build stuff, but people don't always have the stuff at home. To yeah, do it. It's not hard. You simple. Yeah. 
that's great though. I really appreciate you coming on and showing that. So yeah, I'm 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 blessed. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I uh, appreciate my wife for letting me uh, have the shop and <laughs> and for she does all the way along with cashing and that. And uh, there's been some people along the way who've helped, gave me a hand up. So I'm just trying to return the favor and uh, get people back into cashing or into cashing. And um, it's been really amazing to see all the new cashers uh, that have been hitting my caches that have five, 10, 20 fines. So it's been exciting to see all the new fresh blood. It's just, mm -hmm. it makes it fun. Yeah, no, absolutely. We definitely appreciate that. And, you know, I what the one thing I would say before, I know Gary's trying to close the show, but the one thing right. I would say is kind of almost exactly what you said. If if people are into caching or want to get re-energized in caching, the best, one of the best ways to do that is put out a cache that really excites people. Right. It's just one. You don't have to become the next, you know, the truck screw or Chad or, you know, mm -hmm. WBL. Don't, you don't have to do 800 of these. If you put out one, that you can be proud of and people get excited and fun about it, you know, having fun with it, you're going to get energized again. You know what I mean? You're going to get or renewed or whatever else to get those logs in. And people are like, Oh my gosh, this is great. Your, you know, your desire shoots through the roof to become a, a better cashier at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very true. Well, thank you so much, Dan. It was pretty, uh, you'll find him uh, also uh, at the truck on like periscope sometimes down down to a periscope from his workshop so yeah or in live depending where or out in the, if i find a good cache i'll do a periscope yeah, that's true and uh i've seen a few of those one last thing uh, i'll throw in here is uh hide the kind of cache that you like to find if yeah. you like finding a certain type of cache hide that cache that it'll go a long way yeah absolutely uh, that's perfect all right well, it's going to wrap up tonight. Let me play this. Folks, we hope you've enjoyed the show tonight as well as our new format. Please email us your comments at geocachetalk at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. The show can be found on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Radio Public, or Spotify, as well as at the Geocache Talk website. Don't forget to click that subscribe button below and ring that bell notification so that you can see and hear the show on a weekly basis. And tell your friends about the show. Get them involved with us in the chat room. And until next week, don't just talk about geocaching. Go geocaching. Good night, everybody. Good night.